Hey, I'm Uriel Kane. Welcome to another lesson from How to Lose Belly Fat and Get Six Pack Abs. Today we're going to be talking about strategies to help you boost your metabolism. Because that's what it comes down to, right? The name of the game is really burning calories and thus burning fat. And in order to do so in the long term, you need to have a fat burning metabolism, which means you have a metabolism that's you know cranking out and working hard and, and burning, uh, burning calories throughout the day, not just when you exercise. So let's talk about some ways to do that. So the first thing we need to do is strength training. And the reason we talk about strength training is obviously because we need to build lean mass, right? We need to build muscle. And if you're a woman, don't worry, we're not talking about getting bulky, we're just talking about laying down and developing more lean mass. And what that does is it raises your basal metabolic rate. If you've seen my other video on, uh, we, we looked at the calories and the equations and stuff like that, we talked about how to calculate your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which was heavily dependent on your lean mass. The more lean mass you have, i.e. muscle, the more um, the higher your metabolic rate will be, which is what we want, right? So strength training is key. A lot of people go wrong in the sense where they want to lose weight. They just do cardio and cardio and cardio, and they don't think about the fact that that's, I mean, cardio is great in the short term. It's going to help you burn calories during that session, but afterwards, there's very, very little, you know, effect down the road. Strength training gives you long-term investment for caloric burning, okay? So that's the first way we're gonna do it is strength training to build lean mass so that we increase our metabolism for the long run, cool? Second thing you wanna do is, I would recommend exercise early in the morning. So whether that's strength training or walking or running or whatever it is, get up when you get out of bed, you know, do your thing, get, is, the earlier in the day you can get moving, the better. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna get your body moving, it's gonna crank up your metabolism because anytime you move, your metabolism is raised. So studies have shown that if you can move earlier in the day, um, you're going to have, a, have an easier time to burn more calories throughout the day uh, just because the body is now awakened and is ready to burn calories. If you sit around, if you sleep in, if, you're, if your day is you know, slow and you're sitting down all day in an office, you know, you're not burning many calories, right? If you work out after work or later in the day, yes, it's beneficial, but if you can get that stuff done early in the morning, you're going to get a lot more benefit. If you do work out in the evening or in the late afternoon, at least do what you can to walk in the morning, get some activity, take the stairs, do anything you can do to get your muscles actively engaged. That kind of takes us to our next point, which is uh, if you are in a sedentary job, whether you're sitting at, you know, sitting at a desk or at home or whatever it is, you need to be able to engage your muscles somehow. So I talked about the importance, excuse me, of walking, getting out and moving on a, on a regular basis. The other thing you can do is something called static contraction. Now, to give you an idea of what this is all about and how powerful it is, I want you to take 10 seconds right now and contract all of your muscles in your body as hard as you can and hold it for 10 seconds. Are you ready? I don't have my watch on, but here we go. Ready? And rest. Okay. So if you did that, you'll have noticed what? a tremendous increase in your body temperature, right? And why is that happening? Well, we've, we've initiated contraction in, in a lot of our muscles, maybe not all of them, but a, a huge portion of our muscles. And because the muscles are working and the core temperature is raising, that means that we're using up calories. We're gonna raise our metabolism. And that's a great, that's a kind of a great indicator that you can use. Anytime that you raise your body's temperature, you're also raising your metabolic rate. You're raising your metabolism. So, you know, if you're cold all the time, um, or, you know, if you're just, whatever it is, you know, if, if you're out walking, if you're exercising, you'll notice that your body temperature increases. And that's an indicator that you're burning calories, right? So something you can do at the office several times a day, if you're, if you're at home, standing around on the subway, in the car, static contract, go for 10 seconds, all out as hard as you can. Do 10 reps, you know, try that, and you're gonna notice a difference. And it also builds strength. It also gets your muscles stronger, which is amazing. Um, so static contraction is really, really powerful. So that's another thing. Um, let's talk about some nutrition, some nutrition strategies as my dogs jump up, <laughs> jump up on me here. Let's talk about some nutrition strategies. Uh, I'm not a huge believer in uh, fat burner pills, you know, metabolism boosters like caffeine and ephedra and all that stuff. You want to avoid that as best as possible. Uh, those things will kill you in the long run, that's for sure. What you do want to look at as, again, my dogs jump up here and they're fighting now, I'm just going to separate them for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, one second. Come here. You're going to go up here. 
stay. All right, little uh, puppy interlude. So <laughs> nutritionally, what you want to look at, and I'd highly recommend this, is, is ways to support your thyroid gland. Your thyroid is basically right in here, okay? And the, the reason that thyroid is important is that it's the master gland of your metabolism. And a lot of people, especially a lot of women, have uh, eventually, as they kind of approach, you know, in their 40s and 50s, start to have a low thyroid. But actually a lot of people, even in their, in their younger years, have a low thyroid function as well. So, and they're off. All right, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. This is, this is crazy. Anyways, um, so low thyroid function, and, and the, the reason that's, that's a problem is that if your thyroid is, is not functioning properly, your metabolism will slow down. So let's look at some ways to support your thyroid through nutrition as opposed to medication. Thyroid, uh, thyroid hormones T3, T4 are heavily dependent on minerals such as iodine and selenium. Iodine, your best source of iodine is by far sea vegetables. If you can incorporate more sea vegetables, that's you know like dulse, kelp, nori, uh, wakame, arami, any of those you can find at a health food store. If you're eating sushi, you're basically eating nori. Um, is, the more you can get sea vegetables into your diet, the better off you're gonna be from an overall health perspective. They have more minerals than any other food on the planet. And uh, for instance, iodine, they have two, more, most, more or less, most of the sea vegetables have 2,000% of your daily recommended intake for iodine, which is incredible. So iodine is one of the base minerals that's needed for a thyroid hormone, fun thyroid hormone function. Get those in, it's gonna make a big difference. Selenium, try some Brazil nuts. One to two Brazil nuts a day is all you need to get your selenium requirements. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, you're basically looking at supporting your liver through a whole foods diet, making sure your digestive system was working properly, making sure you're eliminating properly. All of these things, you know, even though you don't think of them in terms of, you know, how they're going to help my metabolism make a big difference because everything is interrelated. And, you know, another big issue is stress, right? Reducing stress in your life, meditation, yoga, going for a walk in nature, whatever you can do to help relieve the stress on your adrenal glands because when the adrenal glands are stressed, they also link heavily to the thyroid and the thyroid function will become stressed as well. So those are some ideas that you can use to boost your metabolism. Um, I'm not gonna get into the whole protein issue because obviously protein, you know, obviously, it, I mean, I don't promote high protein consumption. Protein, lean proteins do boost your metabolism because they require your body to work a little bit more. Um, but one, well, actually one more point that I will mention is the thermic effect of food. When you eat something, more or less, I mean, roughly about 10% of the calories you burn on a daily basis come from the thermic effect of food, which means your body expends energy in digesting foods. So you can look at negative calorie foods, such as fibrous vegetables like celery, asparagus, broccoli. All of those are very, very nutrient dense, but low in calories. And because they're a little bit more on the fiber side, the body has to work a little harder in terms of digesting them, and it's going to helps you uh, to burn more calories. So the thermic effect of food, and you can kind of take advantage of that by eating small frequent meals throughout the day. So you're getting that, that you know, think of your, your metabolism as a fireplace and you're constantly feeding the fireplace with pieces of wood, pieces of wood every now and then. So that's it for this lesson. My dog's going crazy. I'm gonna let you go for now, but uh, be sure to come back to myfitter.com forward slash abs to get all these great videos and I'll see you in the next lesson.